Hello VTubers, Felix here, and welcome to the 10th stage of this year's La Tour de France de Fila Way. And the 10th stage this year is from Saint Childeris de Bois to Saint Malo. And we're starting a series of boring stages. Exciting, to be exact, four stages in a row. Two, three sprinter stages and one time trial. Well, if you're into that kind of stuff, you're in luck. But today's stage is gonna be kind of difficult for some riders because the end is so tricky. There will be wind the last two kilometers, and there will be a lot of turns in the last two kilometers. So that's gonna hurt the sprinters in this stage, and the GC contenders needs to stay in the front, that way they don't get caught in a crash or a puncture or anything. My favorites for this stage has to be the three amigos. Andre Greibel, Peter Sagan, Mark Cavendish. Those three big sprinters are probably gonna win this stage, if not for a breakaway. We will have to see how it's gonna go, but I believe Mark Cavendish is gonna extend his green jersey lead in this stage. Hello everybody and welcome to the live pictures from today's stage. And this stage is a transport stage. Not much is happening this stage. We started off in the morning just getting slow, not, not much happening. Then we had a tag from Jerome Capel and Enrico Gasparato. And soon after that they were followed up by Julian Alvarez, Wynats, Bacalans, Demarchi and Isagere. And that was the final breakaway those seven riders. Then they had a sprint, which the breakaway did not sprint for, but the peloton did. And the winner of that peloton sprint was Mark Cavendish in front of Greibel, Goss and Kittle. So Cavendish extends his lead. And that's where we are right now. It's not much happening, but it's, it's a nice relaxing stage after those two difficult stages. But, it's a flat stage. We'll have to do a, what are they called, bio. And I'm doing this one on Alberto Contador. We're on from the big... We're on to the big GC contenders. We see him right now in the yellow jersey, and we hope he stays in that jersey, because here in the Danish productions and Philip productions, we hope he does good. Alberto Contador, he is experienced. Contador has been through a lot. He's been against several riders. He has been against Andy Schleck, Lance Armstrong, Christopher Froome, Bradley Wiggins. You mention a rider, he's probably played, he probably ridden against him. He's got a really strong team this year. Even though there's not a single day in the team this year, still really, really strong with Nicholas Roach, Roman Kreuziger, and Michael Rogers. He's going to come back strong. He's been away from the tour last year, and he wants to win this. He wants to show that when he's not doped, he's good. But he finished weak last time he played the Tour de France, he rode the Tour de France. He did not do the best. I remember him getting dropped by Wiggins and all those guys, and that was just pathetic. He has no dope in him right now, because like, we all know he got convinced of doping because he ate a beef. Well, now he didn't eat a beef this year. Will that affect him? Will he, will Contador on dope be bad? That's the question. Can he live up to his expectations without dope? And he's got more competition than ever. Now he's against Froome, Quintana, Valverde, all those guys. Thibaut Pinot, Pierre Roland, Ch Thomas Vauclair. There's more competition than ever. And that was this one on Contador. I hope you like that one because he's one of my favorite riders right now. Mostly because he rides on Team Saxon Bank Tinkoff. But I'm not trying to be biased for someone. I'm just living the life. But right now the 7-man breakaway is getting caught slowly. They only have 2.2 left. So with 40 kilometers left, I, we don't believe that they'll stay out there. Because a thumb rule is every 10 kilometers 1 minute. And that would mean they gotta have 4 minutes almost. Because right now there's 40 kilometers left. But down the peloton, we see Lodabella Salt Payson with the Ricky Greenwich and Omega Farmer Quickstep and Aga Shimano. They really want this to be a sprint. And we gotta watch out for Mark Cavendish because he looks really strong. And it'll be a pity for all the other sprinters if they don't if they can't take more away from Cavendish than they already have. So we'll see how they're gonna do. Well, we'll go to a quick commercial break because soon it'll be a big sprint and we gotta get those commercials in. This production is not paying for itself. Contador has to watch out for Rodriguez in this stage because he's only 7 seconds behind and he might be able to take some seconds in this stage so he's gotta be careful that no gaps gets created and I see Contador and Rodriguez almost sitting side by side so they know they have to watch out for each other because it can be really fast paced in the end which means gaps can be created and you don't want to lose the yellow jersey on a flat stage or maybe they do, they don't want to do all the works in these stages It's who knows? We don't know what Saxon Bank is thinking of right now. We're not their general managers. But right now, we see the final sprint shaping up. The sprint trains are getting ready to go. 18 kilometers left. It's getting close. 
to the final sprint. Who is going to win the stage? The biggest favorite of the stage has to be Cavendish. But can he be beaten by the breakaway? Can he be beaten by Dicken Cup Kittle or one of the other big sprinters? Let's see. Oh, the sprint is coming up soon. We see Alex Manning getting a really good train set up right now. It looks really good right now. Oh, who's that? Is that Rodriguez sprinting? We see Rodriguez is getting ready to sprint for the stage. Contador has to be really careful that nothing is going to happen, that no gaps gets created. Because that would be a pity if a guy like him would lose time today. Let's see what's going to happen. Final sprint is shaping up, 12 kilometers left. Cavendish has got his train going. Cavendish got his train going. What's going to happen? The pace is so high. The pace is incredibly high. 60 kilometers an hour. And we see Contador sitting down there. Oh, he's got to be careful. He's got to be careful. The peloton is splitting up. The peloton is slowly splitting up. Yep, there it is. It's split up. The mile, the wind is 70 an hour. 70 an hour. 70 miles per hour. This pace is killing people. The peloton split up in half. Oh my god, what's gonna happen? The pace is so high, not even the sprinters can follow anymore. What's gonna happen? The front we see right now, August Shimano is getting ready. It looks like they're all dead, but the breakaway is still going. There goes Jan Bagalans. Jan Bagalans on the attack. He's got a half a minute. Can he do it? Can Jan Bagalans win this stage? Oh, we see Contador is moving forward. Contador is moving forward. He does not want to lose time. He does not want to lose time on the stage. They're getting ready to sprint in the front. What's going to happen? We see the Pelotons getting caught, but Jan Bagalans is in the front. Jan Bagalans with 1.5 left. Jan Bagalans followed up by Gasparato. Is it going to be Belgian victory? Or is it going to be Italian victory? Here goes Jan Bagalans, the first sprint off, but the Pelotons is coming closer and closer and closer. They're now catching the breakaway. Andre Grab is in front. Here comes Mark Cavendish. Mark Cavendish is off to launch the final sprint. He involves Grab like it's nothing. He's catching the marching winners like it's nothing. But in the front, Jan Bagalans win the stage. The Breakaway wins it. Jan Bagalans wins the stage in front of Enrico Gasparato. Cavendish passed off a big, big stage. But the wind in the end was so high. Oh my god, what an intense stage. And we see the Grable didn't even catch the breakaway. Let's see the top 10. Jan Bakalans, Enrico Gasparotto, Mark Cavendish, Matthew Gus, Martin Winans, Alessandro Di Marchi, Andre Greidel, Peter Sagan, Jan Dingelkop, and Jürgen Rollins. But Jan Bakalans has to be the big winner. Did anybody lose time that was really up in the standings? I don't believe so. We will have to watch that final sprint from Jan Bakalans' point of view because that was so intense. This instant replay is sponsored by Focus Sign Up and Pro Cycling Manager. We here see Jan Bagalans attacking away from his fellow breakaways with March last land, 3 kilometers left. He goes now onto the final kilometers really soon. He can see the little flame rouge in the distance. He's going so fast. Just take a look at how far the breakaways are behind him. It's only Gasparato who can really follow him. And why not the Martini Zagir? We'll watch behind him as the big peloton comes up. And they're just going so fast. But Jan Bakalans is just going faster. They just can't catch him. Look at Greipel and Kevin. He's going fast in the background. And he does even the Forrest Gump animation. What a great. Thank you guys for seeing the sprint. That was intense. So the big winner is Jan Bakalans. He really did the best. He gave uh, Radio Shack a victory. That is so amazing. And Enrico Gasparato beating Cavendish in the end is also huge for Astana. They have to prove something with Jacob Forsyth losing time at that other stage. So they have to find other ways to get stage victories. And Contador keeps his yellow jersey with 7 seconds under Rodriguez. Can he keep it for 2 weeks straight? He's got to use a lot of efforts because we saw him using a lot of efforts when that peloton broke. There were 70 guys losing time on that stage, if not more. Let's see. Oh, Mark Cavendish almost got 100 points down to Matthew Gus. It looks like the sprinter's jersey is secured on Cavendish's shoulders. <laughs> Jan Bagland's actually made a top 10 right now. He's 72 points. And why not and Gasparotto all up there? What was Benatti in that sprint? Was he completely dead or something? We couldn't even see him. Thomas Vauclair only 4 points behind Robert Gessink. How long will Robert Gessink keep his mountain jersey? Or will a guy like Alberto Contador take that away from him? The next jersey should be the white jersey coming up right now. Yep, Thibaut Pinot is still having the white jersey pretty much secured down to Quintana. We'll have to see when the Mount Blanc 2 Albuquerque stage is uh, starts to happen, the Big Alps. Can Thibaut Pinot still keep it or will he crack under pressure because Quintana is a big upcoming rider. And Garmin Shop is still the best overall team, they're really good. Team Saxon Bank Tink of 634 behind, I don't think they'll do much better than that because this year beyond a reset, it's all or nothing, yellow jersey or go home. And I believe they'll go home, actually I'm just kidding, they'll get the yellow jersey. Let's see what's gonna say on the equip. Tour de France, victory for Bagalans. 
go buy this newspaper. This I believe this news has happened before. I don't know. I've read it somewhere before. I'm not sure where I've read it before, but you're welcome to look. So, thank you guys for... Oh, wait. No, 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 no. We'll take a look. Who lost time on this stage? Well, it seems like not anyone big. I don't see anyone. Christian Van der Velde lost time. Peter Keenock from Sky lost time. Nicholas Roach and Matteo Dosado did pretty bad, and so, so did Sergio Polano. But I don't think they care about that. So thank you guys for watching. Come back to the next stage. You never know what's going to happen to the Tour de France and Philly away.